Welcome to the Faith Alive Show. My name is Jody Berg and I will be your host. We have an exciting show in store for you today. The Faith Alive Band is going to start us off with the praise and worship song. And then we have Pastor Brent coming to share his sermon on defending yourself. We have our very own Dr. Pierce, the Dean of our Bible School, coming to share a miraculous testimony on how Jesus healed him of cancer. Yes, it's true, Jesus does heal today. His kingdom comes for such a time as this. Man on the street is back. Yes, he's here asking questions of the people of Saskatoon. That is gonna be a good time. And in the Todd session, Joelle will be addressing on how fear affects our bodies. So sit back and expect God's kingdom to come alive in you today. Enjoy the show, and I will be back at the end to pray with you.
Ephesians 6, 16. Let's turn over there. Great scripture. And I want you to learn how to defend yourself today. Say, defend yourself, defend myself, lift up a shield. So many people don't do anything today. Life just happens to them. They don't do anything. Let's read verse 16. It says, in every situation, take the what? Shield of faith. In every situation. Turn to someone and say, every. Every situation. What is every situation? Every. What is every? There shouldn't be one situation, good, bad, ugly, that you don't lift up the shield of faith. How many of you know we are called to walk by faith? We've got to do something in every situation. We're called to be proactive. Most people think faith is passive. Faith is not passive. The shield of faith, by the way, is not behind you. The shield of faith is in front of you. It's not a passive. It's right out there. It's, it's in front of everything. Who would go to war without a shield? You wouldn't last long, would you? So we need to know this. So there's things that we need to do in every situation. I want to read three scriptures here. Don't, do not turn to them. Here's just three that we need to do in every situation. One says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. One of the things we need to learn how to live in every situation, right, is how to be happy when we have lots or when we have little. That's one thing that, as far as I'm concerned, should be a generic understanding across the board. Every Christian should learn how to be happy whether you've got lots or you've got little. That's, that's one thing. Another scripture says, Now the God, may the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at all times and in every situation. In every situation, we should know how to have the peace of God in our life. That's, again, generic across the board. 2 Timothy 4, 5 says, But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. How many of you know you all have a ministry to carry out the good news? And we're going to suffer for it? He says, keep a clear mind. In other words, understand what kind of world you live in, what's happening, why we're in this mess, and this is what's going on. Amen. Someone say amen. amen. So I wrote here, in every situation, God has promised us something. There's promises for everything in our lives, in every situation. But you know what? We have to walk by faith. That's a cross we all have to bear. And really, a lot of times, the cross we have to bear is just being to persevere and to endure in hard times and in troubles and in trials and in suffering. And God will take us through, but you can't throw away your faith in between. Otherwise, you're gone. You're done. God has not promised victory to everybody. He's promised victory to everybody who will obey the word of God and walk by faith in every situation. And even then, I'm going to say this, and you may not like it, but I'll say there may be even times where your faith doesn't do what you thought it should do. I don't know why. I can't explain everything. It's why some people believe God and they die. Some people believe God, they'll never get sick. They get sick, they die. People get cancer. Loved ones fall apart. Things don't happen. I don't know why those things happen. All I know is that I have purpose in my heart that I'm going to keep my faith to the day I die. Whether I see everything I want to or not is irrelevant. And to me, this is why we have to fight it so much. You know, because there's so many people who have given up on their faith because they did not see what they thought they should see. They get disappointed in life, you know, and I don't know, we need, to, we need to get the Word of God into our hearts. You know, maybe that's the problem, really, is that we just don't have it in our heart. Faith is not of the mind. We know that, right? How many of you know that? You've been taught on it. You know that. It's not mentally agreeing. But you know, it's something that happens in the heart. So if it's not happening in the heart, it's very difficult to see this thing through. So the Word of God has got to be in our hearts. And maybe that's what shipwrecks us half the time, is that we just don't have it in there. You know, we're trying to believe God. We're, we read it. We, we try and go forth. We try and see it happen. But, you know, it's just up here. It has not really transferred down into our hearts. So that's what we need to do. Get in the Word of God. Read it. Speak it. Say it. Look at it. Meditate on it. Make sure you get it. Because we've got to learn to walk by faith in every situation. 
Because you've got to put it out right up front, everything, everything. Even when things are going good. Not just for bad times. A lot of people say, oh, faith is for bad. No, if you can't use it in good, how are you going to use it in the bad time? So we've got to practice and work at it. A lot of people just get helpless and hopeless. You know what? You're not helpless and hopeless at all. You have the Word of God. You can walk in this stuff. It's not easy, though. There's a price to pay for it. I think a lot of people just want it to happen because they're a Christian. I'm a believer. I grew up in church or something. When it doesn't happen, they get disappointed. We have to be very careful. So a lot of people, I think, get uh, paralyzed by fear. They get paralyzed by anxiety. They get paralyzed by worry. You know, they get paralyzed by, you know, what they see is not lining up with what they want to see or what they believe. The next thing you know, they just don't know what to do, you know. So you have to decide what you're going to do. Hello, I'm Dr. David Pierce. I want to tell you about a, a miraculous healing that took place in my life four years ago. In the fall of 2008, I returned from the Sudan, and I was uh, quite sick, anemic, weak. By Christmas time, I found that I was laying on the couch in pain. By the middle of January, January 18th, in fact, I was taken to the hospital by ambulance because I was in so much pain, I couldn't lay, turn. The pain was so excruciating in my stomach. When they tested me, they found that I had a tumor in my large intestine that needed to be removed. As I lay in the hospital there before the operation, I was reminded of Hezekiah that cried out to God for an extension of his life when he was dying. For he said to the Lord, he said, Lord, it's not the dead that praise you, it's the living that praise you. And I did the same I, in my weakness. I had difficulty focusing, thinking about scriptures, but I thought about this incident with Hezekiah and I cried out to the Lord and I said, Lord, I want you to give an extension to my life that I can be healed and give praise unto you. It's great to know that God's with us in the tough times and the good times. You know, it's great to know that he's there in the good times, but in the tough times when you're dying, it's another thing to realize that you can call upon God and have that great contentment, that faith that rises in your heart to know that you can trust in God and he's there with you. And after the operation, the doctor said that tumor was likely there for two years and was the size of a small cantaloupe. And I thank the Lord that uh, church prayed, the people prayed, my wife prayed, even the pastor's daughter who was five at the time said she'd been up part of the night, the night of my operation, praying that Dr. Pierce was going to be healed. Well, thank God Dr. Pierce was healed. I did have a tumor removed, but the recovery was remarkable. I had to take no treatments, I took no medication. I'm stronger today, healthier today than I was before. And I give all the glory and the praise and thanks to God for that. Because truly, it's, it's just God's mercy. And if it's you today, it's reaching out to God for His mercy. He can be there in your tough times too. You can allow faith to come in your heart and have that contentment to rise up within you to know that the Lord is present to heal and deliver you, even today. How many of you have ever been in a situation where you, you ran? So if you ran in hard times, I know what you'll do in hard times spiritually. You'll run away too. We've got to learn how to stand our ground in a most trying time. Hardest thing for all of us, I think. So we need to realize that we have an opponent to our faith. We have an adversary. We have somebody who's out there, like we talked about on Friday, watching you, studying you, trying to see where he can mess you up. How many of you know he's, he's, not, he's not willing to let you go? He knows his end is death. He knows he's going into the lake of fire one day. How many of you know he already knows that? He knows it's inevitable. He cannot stop it. So his goal is to take everybody there, as, as many people as he can, with him. That's the bottom line. He knows he can't win this thing in the end. Some people think the devil believes he's going to do it. No, no, no. He, he knows he's not. We always think like he can't see God or something. Oh, no, he can see God. 
He's in the spirit. He sees God shining up there. He sees the angels. He sees knows. Well, every day he's reminded. His end is coming. It's getting nearer and nearer. So what can he do? All he can do is hate the ones God created. That's you and I. And his goal is to take you down to hell and as many people. So, and, he's, and, you know, and he's not satisfied with unbelievers. He's not satisfied with atheists. He's not satisfied with people that don't, don't believe. He's going to go after you and I. He gets a feather in his cap when he can take you down. If he takes down an unbeliever, that's no big deal. But when he can take you down, he may go to hell screaming and grinding his teeth. But in his mind, he says, you know what? I destroyed some of those people. I wrecked some of those believers. I, I wrecked their faith. I brought them down to hell with me. And see, and that's his goal. Our goal is to take as many with us. His goal is to take as many with him. So there's a war going on. We are the battleground. And I think most Christians don't even believe. They don't know anything. You are the battleground. What you think, what you believe, what you do, your response, your devotion to God. You are in the middle of this thing, whether you like it or not. Because I don't want to be in a war. Well, tough. You're in a war. The worst thing you can do is stick your head in the sand. And I think a lot of Christians, they just stick their head in the sand. I don't want nothing to do with it. I don't want to pray. I don't want to fight. I don't want to believe. I don't want to stand up for God. I just want to go to... I want to go on a holiday. We don't even realize how important it is, how serious it is. That's why churches aren't full today. All churches should be jammed full. Realizing the importance of what's going on and how the time is drawing close. The time is drawing close. Closer and closer. And you can see the signs a little bit all over. The writing's on the wall. Man on the street do you believe in heaven or hell? Both, yeah. I don't know. It's not really something I can visualize. I just pick like sparks of energy. I don't know. Jesus up there, devil's down there, you know. I believe mean, there's life then, after death. Both. Uh, do I have to choose one or the other? Well, you know, I like to go to good places. No. Uh, I believe in heaven on earth, which is where we're standing right now. Yeah, I'd say both. No. I suppose in an alternate sense. You guys want to do a survey real quick? Okay, have fun on your date. What's the main religion of Canada? Christianity. Muslim? And Christianity. All of them? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, Christian? <laughs> I don't know. Protestant. Christian? I would suspect would be Islam. Uh, Christianity? Probably Christianity. Catholic? Christianity, maybe Muslim uh, soon? I have to say Catholic. I am the man on the street. Hey. Where do you think you'll go when you die? That's why I'm afraid of death. Hmm. Six feet under. On to my next life. Heaven, hopefully. Probably to heaven. I have no idea. Heaven, hopefully. Heaven. <laughs> heaven. I don't know. Can you name four disciples? Oh my god, no. It's Peter, Paul, John. Yeah. Help. Help. John Paul Logan. No, that's the Beatles. No. Not a chance. Just throw it out there. John, Michael, um, Peter, and Fred. John, Peter, Paul, and. Jacob. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Uh, James. Um, Matthew, Luke, John, Peter. I really can't. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Oh, I can't think of any of this. Joanne, Ark, is that one of them? Matthew, Mark, John, Luke, Paul. Judas, Judas Iscariot. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You guys want to answer some survey questions? Okay, we'll get them when they come back. Steve and Kathy Gray, pastors of World Revival Church in Kansas City, are bringing this
powerful move of God to Faith Alive Family Church for three power-packed nights. Experience the intensity that's caused thousands to rush the altars with visible demonstrations of power and healing. Mark your calendars for October 18th and 19th at 7 p.m., October 20th at 10 a.m., and a special leadership session October 19th at 1 p.m. Everyone deserves to experience the presence of God. Fear. How does your body respond to fear? Fear triggers your body's fight or flight response. This is an instinctive, immediate reaction to danger that helps prepare the body to either fight or escape. Your body pumps adrenaline to your muscles, boosting them to respond powerfully. The brain's hypothalamus initiates the body's flight or fight response by simultaneously activating the sympathetic nervous system, which triggers the nerves, and the adrenal system, which dumps hormones into the bloodstream. The action of the sympathetic nervous system causes your body to become very tense and alert. Meanwhile, the hypothalamus alerts the pituitary gland, which then activates your adrenal system, which releases cortisol into your body. Cortisol then prepares your body to handle the threat. Cortisol released into the body during a fear response causes the following physical reactions. An increased heart rate and blood pressure, dilated pupils, the constriction of your veins within your skin, which causes that chilly sensation often associated with fear, increased blood glucose levels, the tensing of muscles and goosebumps, and the shutting down of non-essential systems such as your digestion and your immune system. In extreme circumstances, fear can completely paralyze a person. High levels of cortisol are required during emergency situations, but over time it wreaks havoc on our cardiovascular system and our long-term health. Prolonged high levels of cortisol damage the heart, they contribute to obesity and it weakens our immune system. Increased levels of cortisol prematurely age immune cells, making people more susceptible to illness. Further negative implications include higher levels of cholesterol, decreased bone density, and depression. As you can see, fear takes a toll on our physical bodies. God never intended for us to be ruled by fear. When we are faced with hard situations or things beyond our control, we have a choice to how we will respond. Will we allow fear in and cripple our minds and wreak havoc on our bodies? Or will we stand firm in our faith and declare, the Lord is on my side, I will not fear. So remember, as Pastor Brent has taught us today, you need to decide what you're going to do. Are you going to be like Dr. Pierce and stand firm in your faith? Or are you gonna let the fiery darts of the enemy put fear into your life? It's totally up to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I know that there's somebody out there that is struggling with cancer right now. And I'm speaking to that cancer and I'm saying, cancer, you loose your hold off of them right now in Jesus' name. I speak to that fear and I say, fear, you stop in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that your presence comes and touches the lives of anyone that is struggling with cancer right now. If this program has touched you in any way. If you have a testimony that you would like to share with us because of this show, please get a hold of us at fafc.ca. And if you're at all interested in joining us for our Faith Alive Bible College, you can reach us at fabc.ca. If you have missed any of our previous programs, you can also watch them on faithalive.tv. We hope to see you next week, and remember, be good to each other, for as God has blessed you, so you bless others. Have a great week. Bye-bye.